Uh, shifting to the Western Conference Finals, Game 4 took place at Staples Center between the Phoenix Suns and the LA Clippers. This was a classic bar fight, just a, a grueling slugfest and just a, a grudge match. It was brutal. It was physical. The defensive pressure and intensity was there. Neither team could shoot the ball well at all. The The Suns shot 36% from the floor, 20% from three. The Clippers shot 33% from the floor, 16% from the three-point line. Suns made four threes. Clippers made five. And to start the fourth quarter, there were only six field goals made. No, six points made. Two field goals made, six points made through the first six minutes of the fourth quarter. There was a stretch where both teams missed 16 consecutive shots. Clippers were 0 for 12 on opportunities to either tie or take the lead in the fourth quarter, which is the most according to stats in the past 25 years. This was gruesome, just brute force, and it, it was just a matter of whose will is stronger because neither team could shoot it at all. There was no consistency with this ball game. There was It was 52 to 36 at the halftime, and then the, the Suns outscored the Clippers in the fourth quarter, 15 to 14. It culminated with 29 total points uh, in the fourth quarter. But this is what's important. What's important was that there was a lot at stake in this game for both teams. You could feel it. The Suns were trying to reach the NBA Finals. They're trying to take command of this series and reach the NBA Finals for the first time since 1993. Chris Paul, of course, the narrative around him, he's trying to reach his first ever NBA Finals. And the Clippers are trying to come back from an 0-2 deficit for the third time this postseason. They already reached history. They already made history reaching the Western Conference Finals for the first time in their franchise's history. And in a series like this, where you've got the possibility of tying this series up and going back to Phoenix in a best of three scenario with a chance to go to the NBA Finals, the Clippers are probably looking at themselves saying, we can still win this if we win this game, game four at home. So there's all this, that's, that's hanging in the backdrop, all this exerted pressure. And Staples Center felt like a pressure cooker on Saturday night. There was it, the, the stress and the anxiety level was was palpable even through the television set watching this game. You could just see that both teams were tightening up. As I mentioned, 16 consecutive misses in the fourth quarter. Clippers were 0 for 12 during that stretch, the longest stretch of misses in 25 years. Neither team could shoot it in the fourth quarter. 15 to 14. The Suns outscored the Clippers in the fourth quarter. So, so backs were a little bit tight. The tension was building up and, and was percolating and boiling over. And you could feel that in the arena. The anxiety. The both teams understanding the magnitude of, the, of this moment, which contributed to why neither team could make a shot. And yet, when the game had more of its rhythm, had more of its flow, that's when the Phoenix Suns jumped out to a 16-point lead. They played with pace. And then the Clippers, as they've been prone to do to start the third quarter, they outscore the Suns 30-19, to which they've been prone to do, making those halftime adjustments. And they kind of mucked up the game. And they turned it into that grudge match, into that 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 absolute dogfight. That's the style of play that they've had the most success with. And every postseason, we always see different NBA players emerge and make a name for themselves. Last year, of course, Jamal Murray in the bubble had a tremendous postseason and really kind of staked his name in those NBA elite circles. This year, we've seen Devin Booker do it. Trey Young have some magical performances. But at the end of the day, the most consistent player 
for the Phoenix Suns. And the best player last night was DeAndre Aiden. I'm going to say it again. I, I talked about last week how he's becoming the next Hakeem Olajuwon. He's got the potential to be there. 19 points, a career high, 20 to a, a career playoff high, 22 rebounds to go along with four blocks. 18 of 24 from the floor was efficient. This postseason, and, and this is something that, I, that I've always talked about when I've been trying to dissect and explicate the, the Phoenix Suns. Devin Booker is their best and most talented player. There's no question about that. Chris Paul is their most important player who they need to win a championship. But DeAndre Aiden has been their most consistent player. This is a guy this postseason averaging 16.5 points, 11.4 rebounds, a block a game on 71% shooting. The guy is money right around the rim. He does not miss. And when he hit that turnaround fadeaway from the baseline over Zubots in the third quarter, that was an eight. That was a beautiful jump shot for a legit seven footer who's not KD, who plays with his back to the basket, but can hit the mid range shot when called upon. DeAndre Aiden was absolutely sensational. And what's more important about him is not just the confidence that he plays with. But it's the fact that he plays within himself. You never see him trying to force the issue. Trying to necessarily actively assert himself. He plays within the game. He lets the game come to him. He doesn't force up shots. He's not pressing. He's just efficient and delivers when he's called upon. And that's what's made him so spectacular and such an underrated piece of this team is he truly has been the anchor this postseason. He's played in every game. He's been the most consistent. He's been durable. And when and his impact extends through every single series that they've been in. The only three games that the Phoenix Suns have lost this postseason are when DeAndre Aiden is outplayed or allows the opposing big to have a monster game. Two games they lost against the Lakers. Anthony Davis in those two games averaged 34 points, 10 and a half rebounds. In the one game that they lost to the Clippers in game three, Zubats had 15 points and 16 rebounds. With the exception of those three games, he's done a really good job mitigating the damage by Jokic and any of the other bigs that were playing in those previous games. He would always be more dominant which is why they'd win these basketball games. So, again, the, the ending of the game was obviously very emotional. There were a couple close calls. I think that that last call with about 7.8 seconds left when Batum is defending Cam Cameron Payne. It looked like the ball knocked off of, Cam uh, of Cameron Payne. They did not review it. That would have given the Clippers the ball back down by one. So there's no question that would have been a huge monumental call, and I understand why Clippers fans were probably upset about that. But, th but this was more about the Phoenix Suns once again checking another box off the list in pursuit of, of a championship title. Having to battle through this adversity was extremely, extremely impressive for them. Now, I will say this. I will admit, the Clippers have earned my respect this postseason. They have been extremely impressive. The, the fight, the resiliency, the grit, the toughness that they've played with and they have demonstrated throughout this postseason. Now they're playing 13 games in 25 days, making no excuses. They have to win on the road in Dallas three times to keep their season alive. They had to go to Utah in game five on the road without Kawhi and win and close out that series in game six at home. And then against the Phoenix Suns here, right from the jump in game one, they're putting up a strong fight. The, the fortitude that this team had apparently lacked in years past, they've got it now and they've been showing it. And they've been extreme. It, it, it is it, it is extremely commendable 
the job that the Clippers have done, undermanned, outgunned, and yet they're right there in the thick of it till the very end. No excuses. Reggie Jackson has been spectacular this postseason for the Clippers. He's been averaging 21 and a half points in the Western Conference Finals, over 18 points per game this postseason. He has filled in admirably for Kawhi Leonard. He has been increasing his production since Kawhi Leonard has gone down. 22 points in Game 5 against the Jazz on the road, 27 in Game 6 at home to close out that series. Obviously, Terrence Mann stepped up with 39 points in that game. And this team, again, finally we're seeing the chemistry. And this is the team that kind of is reminiscent of the Clippers team that people liked just two years ago before Paul George and Kawhi Leonard arrived. They're a really scrappy group with Lou Williams and Patrick Beverly and Montrez Harrell and Zubats and Gallinari. This was a, a Clippers team that people really rooted for because they showed that scrappiness, because they weren't favored and they played a physical, defensive-oriented style of basketball that kept them in ball games, And they were extremely likable. And this Clippers team, even though I'm a Lakers fan, I have to admit that, that they've, they've earned my respect this postseason. Now, unfortunately, as great as Paul George has been this postseason, especially compared to the postseasons he's had in the past, Paul George still needs to step up down the stretch. It's, it's unfortunate that the game has come down to free throws sometimes, and he has missed a number of crucial free throws. It happened again in game four. He was 12 for 18 from the free throw line. Now, I know two of those free throws were intentional misses, but he still missed some big-time free throws with opportunities to tie the game or make it just a one-point game down the stretch, and he would miss. And as good as he's been, again, he's been averaging 26 and a half points, 10 and a half rebounds, six assists this postseason. And in the conference finals, he's been averaging similar numbers, but his field goal percentage has been poor. And especially at the free throw line late. And that's unfortunately been the Achilles heel of the Clippers. This postseason is, is their inability to complete games, to finish games down the stretch. And this is what leads to my final gripe that I will say Kawhi Leonard he's sitting up in the box suite at Staples Center what the hell is Kawhi Leonard doing up at the suite as opposed to being on the bench with his teammates I did not like that at all I thought that was embarrassing and shameful on his end again I understand we don't know the extent of his injury they're intentionally being very opaque very equivocal and vague about his injury, his status. And so I understand not wanting to disclose that, but if you're already at Staples Center, you might as well be in the trenches with your team. Right now, he's just being distant and away from the team. He's not even with them in the huddles. They can't see him during the timeouts. He could perhaps inspire them on the bench, and instead he's up in the suite. And I just don't understand that. I don't understand that at all. For the life of me, I, st I still don't understand that, why they're allowing, why the Clippers are approving of him to go do that when he's at Staples Center already. I understand not traveling for some of the road games. Totally understandable. But you're at Staples Center, you might as well sit in, in those huddles, be in the trenches with your team. So I, I really didn't like that look uh, at all.